Well, hello everybody and welcome to the second video in the NMS training mini-series. In the last one, I've explained what NMS is, how to get it working and how to create a custom monster as you have may seen on the screen. Today, I'm going to be taking it one step further and explain something called Mojang's mappings. For that reason, uh, what I've actually done, I've actually pre-created a couple of worksheets. So we're going to be ver working each other through these two papers because I just think that there is just such a lack and such a lack of structure in the information about mappings, plus a lot of confusion around that. So I just want to give you guys the best setup. And also I know that some people just prefer to read. So if you go down, you click the blog post link with the resources, you can actually download these two. And these two worksheets are actually taken from my class called NMS Advanced, which shows you more about NMS based plugins, including particles, animations, and all that good stuff. And the link to the class is also in the description of this video. So having said that, what are Mojang mappings? Uh, very simple, as I explained in the last video, the default source code of the server is obfuscated. That means it is encrypted. That means that you can't really understand it, right? So that's why Bucket was, was created. That's why there's all that layers and stuff. I've explained everything of that sort in the la last video. So I'm not going to spend too much time explaining what a bucket is, what a craft bucket is, what Spigot, what paper is, what is the API, what is the implementation. We already done this in the first episode on this series. Plus in the last one, I've done it in even more depth. In this video, I just skip right in it and I'll continue where we've taken out and taken off in the last one. So in today's video, I'll just go into Mojang Mapix. Now, as I explained in the last one, uh, by default, the, the source code in Mojang was called, say, get level, if you want to get the world. Now, what happened when Mojang obfuscated it or en encrypted it to prevent their intellectual property, it changed itself to, say, A, right? So you don't really know what that garbage is. Now, what Spigot did for some parts of the code, they simply came across, came up with their own names of fields and methods, and they could just call it getWorld, for example, right? However, Mojang a couple of years ago released their own original mappings, which simply stands for the original names, how things were called back then. And so now you have access to these original names. That's really it. We're done. The second worksheet is how to actually get it working within your plugin. So first things first, you need something called build tools. And if you just use paper, then pretty much you don't ever need to use build tools. But if you want to get the special server jar file that contains these Mojang mappings, uh, there is a set of instruction in build tools that will provide it for you automatically. So what you're going to do is just go to mineacademy.org slash build tools. It'll give you the link to build tools page automatically and then here just follow the instructions and get it working on your desktops for windows very simple what do we have to do just yeah just get git and then get java and then you can download build tools that jar from this link and then the way i like to run it is just i just like to place it in a new folder say build build tools just like that place it in and then you're gonna want to have a startup script i can just say start and then for windows uh not me for windows i just going to have the script be bat file right this is essentially the same as the launching script for your server if you don't have that check out the first or the second video in this series where i um explain how to how to set this up for linux for mac os and for Windows, for Windows, you can just right click after you've renamed it. And if you can see the file extension, right, just Google how to show file extensions and then rename it to bat. Right click, go to edit. And then right here on this step one, it says what you're supposed to put. So just copy this, put it inside and then make sure that the build tools jar, okay, is actually called the same. And then uh, let me just try to look for the remap right here and i can see that i made a small typo inside the guide because there's supposed to be two dashes so i might as well just just fix it after this video so make sure that you have two dashes when it comes to remap and if you see what speaker tells you it'll install additional jar into your local maven repository i don't really have to explain what that is guys if you want to just be a normal human being but basically on your computer if you go into your user folder there should be a secret dot dot m2 folder 
and that basically contains a copy of all the libraries that are being used when you are um, when you're developing well you know i only have eclipse opened so you're gonna bear with me so for example i'm using chat control plugin right here which is an actual premium plugin right and i have maven jar plugin i have my foundation here i have a shading plugin and i guess that's it but if, if i go into the actual thing that has a lot of these libraries i have a lombok dependency and all the other ones all the many other dependencies so basically every one of these dependencies has to be downloaded somewhere on your computer and this is where it's going to be put so speaker is just going to place the copy of the special server jar with the original names inside that folder that is what it means now once you're done with this all you have to do is double click this and it should be working right it says could not find a portable git then it's going to do something funny don't worry it's not a virus all you have to do sit back relax and i'll see you later happy new year guys so finally it finished running it said something along the lines that it finished running but unfortunately i already closed the window and then you will end up with a huge pile of files i think it generated like twenty thousand files twenty six thousand files i'm not joking it's a bit crazy don't worry about it everything is fine again not a virus that's just how it works uh, that's why i like to use paper because paper just does it for you automatically and all we have to do is hit the magic x button that's it now we're done so what do we have to do actually is go to the worksheet and go to step two inside you'll find a link click the link it should give you a paste bin now open the source code of your minecraft plugin which you want to start using mojic mappings for i'm just going to be continuing cow canoon uh this is the plugin that we're creating throughout this entire episode you should be familiar with it if not don't worry if you have another plugin that's fine too so inside here in the palm file since i'm using maven and if you don't know what that is just refer back to episode two in this series where we're going to be creating this file together inside this file what you're gonna do is just follow these instructions so this code should be placed into the properties which is right here i can just place it right here and then obviously today we have a little bit more modern version so let me just edit this to the most modern version for you this might be uh 1.27 or something depending on when when you're watching this video and so that's the first step the other step is place this inside the dependency so let me just scroll below and then i can just place it to the bottom right here and this should be it now you you can see that the classifier is remapped mojang and if you really want to dive deeper then you can open up the hidden dot m2 inside your users folder go to repository and then just find org that spigot mc that spigot and then you'll see the latest version of it and then you can actually see that we have the original server jar which is 16 megabytes and then we have the remapped server jar which is a little bit bigger and then remapped mojang and remapped obf which i think stands for obfuscated that means uh spigot mappings and then this one is mojang mapping so this is the one that we're going to be using right and this is to just point to the appropriate jar file the classifier Okay, so that's it. And then we also have to place the following code in your plugins section and build. So let me just copy this whole thing. And then let me just find, uh, so build plugins, and then the plugin, the last plugin finishes right here. And then we just place it right here. So essentially this special source is a Michaels, which is the founder of Spigot MD5 plugin, um, if I'm not mistaken. And this one will help you convert back Mojang mappings into Spigot mappings because legally you're not allowed to use it for commercial or production purposes. So we have to convert it back into Spigot mappings, which do not have this uh, limitation. So I hope that this version is the latest one. You can, of course, just open up the MVN repository to which I included the link here. And okay, voila, I see now that we are a bit outdated. So let me just change this to 1.2.5. And then of course hit the load Maven changes. If this icon doesn't work for you, right click the file, go to Maven and hit reload project. And if you're lucky, this should now start. Yeah, this should stop being red and everything actually should stop being red. There you go. And now you should have access to everything that you need. Perfect. In the last video, I used something called custom entity psycho from my premium plugin winter and if you watched the last the last video you you basically should be able to have the same code i did not give you the code because it's from my pro, pro 
pre-retiree. I, I can't pronounce that, but it's, it's from my closed source plugin. But out of generosity, guys, I I'm not I don't care that much about someone stealing the code because it's not too much of a code. I just wanted to be generous and I given you that code for free. Um, just you have to the trick was to watch the video. Actually, I'm not going to give it to line by line. So let me just copy and let me place this into say NMS package. And let me just place it right here. Now, what's going to happen is if we are converting between spigot mappings and uh, Mojang mappings, you'll see that barely anything works because these names are a bit different, right? Unfortunately. So the way we have to look for these changes is on step three, fixing compile errors and testing. And then here we have actually provided a shortcut to a website, mindcanning.org slash mappings which will help you with the comparison. So that one takes an awful lot of time to load, but once it finally loads, and I hope that they also provide 1.20, I'm not really sure about this, but anyways, you should get the basic just, now you should just be able to see, say, search for entity snow man, there we go. Okay, and now you should be able to see the name um, in Spigot, which is this one, the orange one. And I know that the website is too small for YouTube. So maybe you have to zoom in a little bit. I'm afraid that if I zoom in, my browser is going to crash because this site is just too heavy to load. But the basic gist is, I don't know if you can see this. Okay. So it, it disappeared. But anyways, there, there was on top of, uh, on top of the orange, there was also the green label and it said Mojang and the name is actually called Snow Golem. Okay, so Snow Golem, right? And it's a bit funky. You have to use your common brain. And this is how we're going to be um, basically updating all of that. So the best way you can start with is just to open up this Snow Golem class and then look at the constructor. So now it asks for an entity type. So instead of entity types, I think we just have to go into the entity type and then we have to make sure to import it from the net.minecraft.world package, not bucket package. And then you can see that here, instead of using the obfuscated na name, now we have access to the unobfuscated name. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's the first step. Now, set position raw, that appears to be working, but the false is not there. That means that something has changed, and I'm not even sure if we still have to if we are in, in the right, right method. So let me just try set pause, set pause, set pause raw. I don't know. Let me try to look for this in, in the website. Okay. Well, here it says it's just named set position raw, but that apparently doesn't work because the website only goes to 1.18, I think. So, oh, 1.18 actually disappeared. Okay, so that's really strange. I'm just gonna go with set post raw and I'm gonna get rid of this Boolean, just like that. And then when it comes to these pathfinders, what you'll see in the entity golem, now we can use the goal selector and target selector uh, full names actually. So goal, target, selector, and then uh, the pathfinder goal meal attack should I think be just ranged attack goal, or maybe we can go in and try to look for this again. Yeah, and it's called meal attack goal. Okay, so you guys basically can see how that will work. I don't have to spend so much awful time because in the last video, I already covered this entire code line by line. What I wanted to do for you guys is just to show you how I think when it comes to updating, uh, changing your code from Spigot to Mojang mapping. So let me just do a cut. Let me fix all of that and see you at the end. There we go. I fixed everything. Should just be straightforward when it comes to fixing as I just explained. And also, if you want to learn more, check out the previous video about NMS. Again, I'm going to show you how I think because I think NMS requires you to just use your own brain and do a lot of decompilation rather than scrolling through spigot and you can pretty much get a sense for this after a couple of days if you use it although yes guys it is confusing that's why we have the full class called nms advanced which again link is in the description that'll just help you understand it even even better with full seven weeks of content and two times per week with me personally on live coaching calls so once you have that let me just create an example command and let me spawn that Okay, guys, so 
com creating commands, I covered this in a separate video. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Basically, how you can spawn using this class in 1.20 is you just create a new constructor of it and you place the location where you want the mob to appear. Very simple command. Make sure to put it in your plugin.yaml as well, as I did right here. And then make sure to also register the command inside your on enable method. Having said that, let me try to compile this and let me show you how this will work. So when you compile it, you'll see a bunch of new files inside your target folder. This jar right here is the file that we need. And if you try to decompile this jar and go inside your NMS class, you'll see that the custom uh, special source Maven plugin, not Spigot plugin, Maven plugin that we placed inside the POM file has actually changed the Mojang mappings back into Spigot mappings. And this is our code, how it looks like now, because the server is actually using Mojang uh, now. No, the server is actually using Spigot mappings as always. So that is why you need to do that with your plugin. Let me just place it right here. Let me reload and hopefully this is going to work. All right, guys. Awesome. So now we have a full psycho map. If I type in psycho can actually spawn as many as you'd like, and they are now properly attacking me. Now you might wonder in the beginning, they were trying to kill me in the intro of this video. Yes, this is in, this is dealt inside the entity damage by entity event or entity damage by, I guess, block event or something. And I explained the full code in the last video. So not this one, but the last one before this one called NMS. If you want the full code from my winter plugin uh, regarding this feature, check that video out. But I guess that proves the point of this video. And I guess I've given you enough examples already. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about NMS, check the training called NMS Advanced in the description. You're going to learn a lot more than I could have scrolls that I could have cramped in this YouTube tutorial. And yeah, that's it, guys. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.